Hey guys, Walt D1911 here with part two of my series of Why Reload. Today we're going to take a look at all the components and equipment we'll need to get started so you guys can reload your own ammunition. First thing, which I don't have out on the bench, is safety glasses. Don't forget your safety glasses. Very important. Again, safety is the number one rule while we go through the process of reloading. And you'll hear me stress that throughout the whole segment of videos that I'm going to put together. So um, that should always be in the back of your mind and in the front of your mind is safety. Okay, let's take a look at some of the components that you're going to need to get started. All right, number one, you're going to need brass. The best way to obtain brass is to pick it up at the range. In all the years I've been doing this, I have never, ever purchased brass. You buy factory ammunition, you go to the range, you do your shooting, pick up your brass. That's what I've always done. i got friends of mine that pick up their brass when they're out. So I always have an abundance of brass, and it's extremely important to inspect that brass before you start to reload it and we'll get into that in more detail when we go on to the next part so brass is definitely an important part of the process you can get it just from your range you could even ask your range officer wherever you shoot if it's okay if you could pick up uh, brass or if they have extra brass laying around um, so right there you're gonna save a bunch of money by saving the brass that you already shot. Number two, you're going to need some bullets. Alright, we're talking about 45 ACP here. I use a couple different brands of bullets. I use berries, which is a plated bullet, um, as opposed to a full metal jacket. I also use Montana Gold full metal jacket. And again, we'll get into the details in that as we go through the next set of videos but you're definitely going to need bullets. You're going to need primers. I use CCI large pistol primers, number 300s. There's other brands out there, uh, Winchester, Federal, whatever you prefer is, uh, is okay. They're all good components and uh, I, like I said, I just happen to prefer the CCIs. You're going to need powder. I use two types of powder mostly. Power pistol, which is very good for semi-automatics, and I use Unique. They're manufactured by a company called Alliant Powder. Um, very reliable, pretty much inexpensive for a pound of powder, uh, somewhere in the $20 range. The primers that you're going to need for a thousand are somewhere in the $30 to $35 range. Bullets will vary depending on the type that you use. Berries is pretty much um, an inexpensive way, which is why I use them. Plus, they're good quality. And Montana Gold, which is another company, you can buy in bulk directly online. Everything that I'm going to show you here today, you can purchase online through major wholesalers, Cabela's, Cheaper Than Dirt, Midway USA, and there's a slew of others out there that uh, that carry all these components so if you go online all you have to do is Google reloading components hand loading components equipment and the choices are endless out there and don't forget about your local shops your local gun shops a lot of places will carry this type of, uh, of equipment and, and components for you to get started to um, so that's that's not a bad idea either you could support your local businessman and your local gun shop um, but the choice is up is up to you and if anybody's got questions about that just let me know and I'll be more than happy to uh, to step in and help you out um, one thing I don't have on the on the on the bench and let me place that on there which is definitely what you're, you're gonna need is a up-to-date handbook of cartridge reloading. This one happens to be from Hornady, or Hornady and um, it's got a lot of good information. It's the updated version. 
you're going to need that before you get started. Like I said in my previous video, read up as much as you can. Pick yourself up a good reloading manual. There's plenty of them. Spear, Sierra, Lyman. There's, again, a slew of books out there. I happen to uh, use the, uh, the Hornady handbook, and it's been uh, very helpful to me. All right, well, let's talk about equipment. What are you going to need to get started? Well, the first thing you're going to need is a press. I happen to use a RCBS rock chucker press, which is right here. Um, I've had this for over 25 years. Um, it still looks brand new. I take care of my equipment. Again, that's something we'll discuss in detail. But you're definitely going to need a press. This one is a single stage. Um, again, other companies out there that make these components, Lee, Hornady, Dillon, there's a whole slew, again, of, uh, of equipment manufacturers out there. So, uh, again, you know, you can go by price. Um, you can go by whatever brand that you prefer. Um, there's also companies out there, Lee in particular, will put a whole package together where you could purchase everything as a package, maybe a little cheaper. So that, that could be an option for you. Um, this is a single stage press and that's the way I do all my reloading. I've went through progressives, I went through turret presses, but for my purposes the single stage uh, just works for me. It's, it may take a little longer, but this is a hobby for me also. I'm in no hurry when I do my reloading. So the single stage, I think you get a little bit better quality load. Um, and it just works for me. And if you're, you're new to this, that's, that's what I suggest you start with. You can always work your way up to a progressive or, or a turret press down the road if you prefer. Um, for my purposes, single stage works perfect. You're going to need a set of dies. I happen to use RCBS dies, and there they are. All right, they're carbite dies, which means you don't need to lubricate your brass prior to reloading. It's a big step in saving time. The RCBS dies are high quality. They're, they run anywhere from $40 to $50 per set. Um, these dies are probably 10 or 15 years old. They're still rocking and rolling, and I haven't had any problems with those. So get yourself a good set of dies. You're going to need a powder measure. And again, this one here is made by RCPS. And basically what you would do is you would fill that tube with the powder of your choice. There's a micro dial on the other side which will help you adjust the amount of grains that you're going to use. That handle will come up and down and it will charge your empty brass. You're going to need a scale. This one I happen to use again is RCBS. And it's just your basic balance scale. There are digital scales out there today. A um, little bit more expensive. Uh, again, I've used this scale for a long time. And maybe I'm just a little bit old-fashioned, but I prefer to stick with the, uh, with the balance scale. Because once my powder measure is set, I can pretty much... Uh, rely on that scale to double check my loads as I go. Alright, you're going to need a primer tool. Then I happen to use a Lee primer tool, which is right here. And basically what you would do is you would place 100 primers into that, into that disc and you don't have to handle individual primers. We'll go through that on the next set of videos and I'll get into all the detail of the equipment on the next videos. You're going to need a, a, a primer pocket cleaning tool which is that green handle right there and basically what that does is you get into your you get into your brass and after about two or three times you after you remove your your primer 
you would clean that pocket with this little tool. And again, get into more detail as we, as we go down the road. All right, and right here, the gray tray is, uh, is another big part of the process. Um, that's going to keep you organized. It's going to keep you clean on your workbench, especially when you're doing the powder charging. You're going to be able to visually look into those cases to make sure that every case has got powder in it before you go on to the next process of placing your bullet on top. Uh, again, more detail to follow as we go into the individual parts of, of the reloading. Um, relatively cheap, eight or nine bucks, you could pick these trays up. Or, if you don't have those, which you could basically use, and I've done this too, you basically just use these white plastic trays that come with your factory rounds. You could use these to help keep you organized too, but I prefer the gray cases here, the trays. The thing you're going to need is a good set of calipers. Right? And these, hap these happen to be Cabela's back here. And this is going to help you to make sure that your bullets are properly sized and your dimensions are correct. And we'll go into detail on how to use these as we go through the, uh, the rest of the parts. All right, so this is just a general overview, guys, of the equipment that you're going to need to get started. Last thing you'll need is a tumbler. And it's that orange bowl back here. And this one happens to be a Lyman. And I've had that for many years also. That's filled with corn cob media. And basically what, I'll, what you'll do with that is you'll, you'll take your, uh, your dirty cases that you picked up at the range. You put them inside the tumbler. You run your tumbler for about an hour. And you'll get nice clean brass. You don't want to use dirty brass while you're reloading. You don't want to scratch the inside of your your dies. This brass has been cleaned through my tumbler after I picked it up at the range. And as you can see, it's nice and clean. It's nice and shiny as opposed to full of grit and sand and everything else. Okay folks, well, that's basically it. on what you'll need to get started. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, you know, respond to the video and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Our next part will consist of cleaning your brass, depriming it, resizing it, and then putting your new primers in. So we'll, we'll take this one step at a time and uh, this is probably going to be five to six parts because I want to get into as much detail as possible through each step so um, like I said if you have any questions please feel free to uh, to comment or send me a personal message and uh, I look forward to doing the uh, the next video and I appreciate it guys and thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon